Uh, good evening and welcome everybody who is joining us for this Q&A session with Meera Shanoi, who is the founder CEO of Youth for Jobs. And today we're going to talk about Youth for Jobs, the Rangde partnership with Youth for Jobs, the specific challenges that Youth for Jobs is working around, and a lot of anecdotes and stories uh, that, you know, uh, Meera Ma'am has to share with all of us. So before mm -hmm. we get started, I will quickly introduce uh, Meera Ma'am for all of us. So Meera Shanoi, founder CEO of Youth for Jobs, is an acknowledged pioneer in market-linked skill trainings for rural, tribal, and disabled youth and linking them to sustained livelihoods at scale. She is one of the few in the country who works on uh, policy, uh, at uh, strategy and implementation of large projects, integrating technology and markets for supporting livelihoods of the vulnerable. Her most recent work was supporting the advisor to the prime minister in her capacity as exactly. chairman NSDA. She was also senior advisor UNDP, youth scaling, where she focused on uh, integrating rural girls into government schemes. She worked as the World Bank's specialist in their poverty alleviation projects. She has written several learning notes for the World Bank, which was circulated globally. Meera Shanoi began her work in skilling as executive director of EGMM, the country's first job mission for rural and tribal youth, which she helped set up from scratch for the Andhra Pradesh government in 2004. She took it to scale and influenced policy she has spoken at TED events at the UN, Stanford, and uh, MIT, among others, and has won several prestigious awards. Her latest book, You Can Be Smarter and Wiser, is a Bloomsbury publication and a bestseller in its third edition. It captures inspirational stories of entrepreneurs with disabilities and company leaders who have integrated disability into their businesses. She is also the founder of Not Just Art, which supports creative talent of photographers and disabilities. This was a long introduction, but I think she is a personality who <laughs> deserves this long introduction. So um, we are really glad to have you with us, uh, Meera Ma'am. And I'd love to know more about Youth for Jobs uh, straight from you. So if you could tell us a little bit about Youth for Jobs. <clears throat> oh, thanks for that, Sukta. Uh, and thanks for all the people who come here to listen to this connect and my two team members who are here, Vishnu and um, Shravan. So Youth for Jobs, uh, we, did, we describe it as an organization with a heart because unless you have a heart and passion for the space, you really can't work and you can't work at scale for solutions for people like uh, persons with disabilities or any vulnerable section of the society. So, uh, and what do we do? We actually work to make the youth with disabilities poverty free. The pathway for this is a pathway which I understand, which I worked at for several years, as you said. Uh, it is resilient livelihoods. The focus has largely been on jobs, but we realize that the needs of uh, disability also mandates us to work on enterprises and thus began our journey on linking youth with disabilities to enterprises. Uh, we believe, and I believe that if I've left the corporate sector and organizations like the World Bank, it's important for me to impact Bharat at scale. So my focus is that uh, how do I actually impact the country uh, influenced really by Gandhi and values. So, for example, our building blocks of the organization is the belief in the potential of the poor, um, in the use of technology for transparency and to improve learning and outcomes. And there, I'm happy to tell you all that we recently, recently set up what we what is the Atmanirbhar, what our Prime Minister calls the Atmanirbhar first AI triggered accessible job platform called, it's called Swaraj Ability and it's dedicated to the youth with disabilities alone. It's put the persons with disability at the heart of the solution. So every part of it is tested by youth with disabilities. And of course we have the companies on the other side and there's the AI which matches the two, which was 
and the AI algorithm is given by IIT Hyderabad. Um, and that will further bring scale to this work because governments have come on board, companies have come on board, NGOs will come on board once we put the button, which should happen in one week. So that's another exciting solution which we've given to the country, completely home ground with the best of tech partners from India. Uh, and the last, which is extremely important, which keeps me focused on the path, is that I truly believe that if you give a good livelihood to a person with disability, to a youth with disability, it takes not just the youth, but the entire family out of poverty in a very sustained manner. And there's enough studies done on my work throughout which clearly show this. And that I think, because me and my team see it every day, it just keeps not just me, but hopefully my entire team very focused on this path. So that's Youth for Jobs for you. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, I think uh, one key element of your work is sustainability. So you want to design these as long-term interventions and sustainable models. And that's great because uh, at Rangde, we believe in the same. We, uh, we want to work with partners who have the same vision of long-term intervention. Uh, for those who have not, I would strongly recommend that you check out uh, Mira Ma'am's uh, TED Talk, TEDx Berkeley Talk, uh, a wonderful uh, small talk about uh, the things Youth for Jobs has been able to achieve. But I'd like to move on now to uh, the partnership that Rangde and uh, Youth for Jobs have kicked off uh, last month. And I'd like to tell all of you about the Entrepreneurs with Disabilities Fund. Uh, so good news is that the fund has, I think, sometime at midnight or maybe today, it crossed 10 lakhs raised for entrepreneurs with disabilities. So all of you are a part of that celebration today. Thank you for joining in. Uh, but the good, the best part of this fund is uh, by investing in this fund, you can enable setups and enterprises that have been set up by entrepreneurs with disabilities themselves and they can use this money to grow their income to uh, have a cash flow to get inventory to really scale up sustainably and uh, we are aiming for just that with, with youth for jobs but i'd love to know from uh, you ma'am uh, you know how do you think or uh, you know what role do you think this partnership plays uh, for the ecosystem um as I told you earlier, um, uh, uh, why did we step first into the field of enterprise? I think COVID taught us several lessons. Uh, we were the first to go what we call grassroots online because um, maybe 80% of the youth who enroll in our programs come from the rural areas, from the villages. But when we went online, uh, I think we touched remote pockets which we'd not touched before. And that gave us several learnings. One learning which we had was the fact that um, the um, there are several pockets which we've not touched, like young women with disabilities who have little kids. There were young widows with disabilities. There were uh, people with complex disabilities who could not move to aspirational jobs. Many of them had very low level of education. So anyway, we couldn't put them because of the way the labor markets are. So then uh, it forced us to go back to the drawing board and say that if we are an organization which puts the youth with disabilities at the heart of the solution, should we just focus on jobs or should we also look at what they want, okay? Which is self-placement or enterprises or even just nano enterprises, which a lot of them want. And therefore, that's how we decided to get into this. Um, and uh, we thought that we should look at, do you want me to tell the challenges now? Or um, do you speak yes, about yes. the partnership first? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, your call, you can, you can touch on any of those aspects. Totally fine. Yeah, because then I think if you talk about the challenges, then the Rangde partnership flows naturally. Yes, yes. Sure. That's why we came to you. Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah, so the challenges I think uh, we found when we worked on the field and uh, let me tell you what's happened is that simultaneously we started something called the Grassroot Academy, 
what is the grassroots academy we also believe that if we are putting you know there's this un thing that nothing for us without us okay so we said that if we believe in the potential of youth with disabilities can we make them the leaders in certain districts okay so we took four states okay three districts each and we took youth with disabilities from the community who we called divyang mitra and we invested in them we gave them digital skills we taught them how to do jobs and enterprises identify youth advocacy and these voiceless youth became people with such a big voice that recently in sabai madhapur i want to tell you this divyang mitra of ours when the local people didn't listen to their problems he took a delegation to the chief minister and now he's become an advisor wow. now these people clearly told us that we need alternative solution besides jobs because yes we were trying for local jobs and we've started understanding solutions there but we also you know need to work on nano enterprises and if you want to do that what are the kind of challenges we get number one is access to startup capital okay um yes the banks are there yes the microfinance is there yes you have money out of your phone which pops out but the problem is the interest rates the documentation which they need and also quite often in this e what you call easy money i don't think the poor understand what the implications of it are so one was that the second was that there were people who were entrepreneurial who had enterprises but didn't know how to expand or <clears throat> they were not willing to take the risk then you had of course the fact that they didn't understand many of them couldn't understand didn't have the skills they wanted to do it but didn't know how um, or had ideas but were not willing to take the risk um and some i think there was also a complete complete lack of the ecosystem which can support them there were lack of mentors which is so needed you know for the segment right. so we looked at all these challenges and said okay fine let's put a process in place so we put a process in place and both my colleagues who were there headed i'm only talking on their behalf um we put a place where the divyang mitra was equipped to actually go and first talk to the households and if you identify people who have interest then he goes to the house talks to the youth talks to the parents find, finds out is this idea for real is he really dedicated and we found sometimes what happens is just the relatives and the friends pool in that little money which needed right, you know right. solutions have emerged from this process also simultaneously the team what they did was they developed something like 50 business proposals which could be you know offered to them to those who don't have an idea and they scanned the local markets that the divyang mitra were taught to scan the local markets so that three viable ideas can be offered to those who didn't have ideas and then <clears throat> we taught them we had a simple entrepreneur model which you know taught them apps taught them social media etc and it was really quite amazing i must tell you the story where there was this girl who just had a sewing machine okay yeah and we just taught her some of the social media skills you know 15 days later when my team member had gone there she had put up a board there saying it became her name was lakshmi it became lakshmi boutique okay and she had stuck pictures all over okay insta and facebook wow. of her and she had she was, she was now selling ready made garments okay she had i think understood the power of the social media and became quite a hero in in that Wonderful. area you know in the bargain uh, the other thing is that we handhold them for a year and it's quite holistic because what happens is that there are a lot of schemes which are available for the people with disabilities but the poor don't know about it so they don't access it right. so for example i think there was this person called baby agarwal who was you know working she had put up a electrical shop which was losing money we helped her we taught her the skills but not only did the bounce back her electrical shop but we also helped her to get a scooty 
okay so that kid that person and that was from the government you know she was entitled to it but she didn't know how to access it so what happens is that our work becomes very holistic because we teach them where to get their entitlements you know like the udid and the other things and that that becomes a enterprise plus because it gives especially for the persons with disability even if you have a physical disability in the rural areas where with this ups and downs it really is very restrictive um, so that's the process uh, which we do and um, yes and therefore the rangade partnership okay with all these challenges in the beginning we put in our own money to see what happens uh, whether to start the nano enterprises or to scale it but very soon we realized that if we really wanted to scale it then we really had to see what were the systems of money available which were proper and then um, the ram and i of rangade both of us he reminded me where had received the world bank award at the same time in the development marketplace so um we chatted and uh, it seemed to be proper flexible a lot of flexibility built in uh, low interest rates i think um, the poor were not burdened if it was burdened it was the ngo who paid all the costs okay. which are necessary for delivery um so um we thought mo model was good so what we are doing right now is we are working with them to pilot in one area as a beginning and if it works then you know of course we'll scale it in, in large numbers right through all our programs which are rural everywhere besides the grassroots we'll also take it through our project parivartan which is uh, one of the largest programs in south asia for the poor superb superb thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, the on ground situation and you know the variety of hurdles and challenges that people with disabilities usually have to face but you know for everybody joining us some of us uh, because of lack of awareness or lack of knowledge we tend to paint disabilities with the same broad stroke mm. there are so many different types of disabilities there are motor uh, motor disabilities there are physical disabilities there are developmental disabilities uh, there are visual disabilities and i'm so happy that youth for jobs is working for all kinds of disabilities and mm. uh, ma'am if you could tell us a little bit about other different types of nano enterprises that different category of disability uh, entrepreneurs work in or you know find most suitable i think that would be really insightful and i think i'll ask my colleagues sure vishnu and shravan to join in sure sure yeah uh yeah yes shravan go ahead yeah so uh, we 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 have uh, done in the last one year around the 125 uh, Uh, pwd youth uh, uh, trained in the micro enterprises less uh, helped in establishing uh, uh, enterprises so we could see that largely uh, lokomotor disabilities who are uh, partaking into uh, enterprise model and uh, few few are from uh, uh, i mean uh, intellectual disabilities as well as uh, speech and hearing impaired and few are from low, low vision as well but largely lokomotor disabilities are taking uh, partaking into uh self employment opportunities okay and what kind of uh, self employment opportunities do locomotor uh, uh disabilities and the related entrepreneurs like to take up like what what have you seen most success with yeah uh, so uh, largely uh, kirana uh, stores and uh, tailoring and garments tea stall and uh, uh, catering center and then uh, online services and xerox centers and vegetable uh, shops and then internet cafes and things like that are major major ones people mostly participated in these uh, activities so there are other activities saloon and medical shop and you know scrap business and uh, uh, and then retail stores and then watch shop mill uh, dairy milk and then carpentry and then floor mills you know aata chipki wala then uh, you have beauty parlor mobile repairs and electrician there are many more many more but those are in very uh, single digits but largely okay. are in the the, uh, the first mentioned there okay and uh, if you could tell us a little bit about 
uh, entrepreneurs with low vision, uh, what kind of setups do they usually take up? Uh, they, we have uh, very few in low vision. Uh, they are into uh, like Krena and then some are into uh, vegetable vending and some are in electrical shops where actually the wife of the person or the husband of the I mean, person are supporting in that because they also uh, undergo the training program along with the PWD candidate. So oh. they learn all the techniques and no, I mean, nitty gritties and uh, they try to help the partner. So that is how uh, this has been accommodated. And then they can avail all the PWD schemes available mm -hmm. and uh, thereby they can enable themselves to take it forward. Okay. I just want to add to what Shravan said, Sukhda. I think the issue is that, you know, um, the people with disabilities, they have very low self-esteem. Okay? Right. Because of the way society treats them and much more so in the villages where there are lots of, you know, bits around it. So the general attitude is this person is useless, okay? But everyone wants to be economically independent. So the model which we adopt generally is that you look for successes, okay? When you look for successes, what, what naturally happens is the first is the people with locomotive disability, they come in larger numbers compared to, you know, the other disabilities, right. okay? Because they are willing to take, let's say, if the others are willing to, if 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 the cent percent, these people will be willing to take 25%, okay? Whether visual and all are generally not so entrepreneurial mm -hmm. because even if they want to be, the whole society is telling them you can't set up an enterprise because of the kind of disabilities you have. Right. So the model which we work in, in generally in our work is that we wait for these early successes so even if the numbers today, Shravan is working, are small in the list of 150, we take those successes of the different disabled, whether it's low vision, whether it's speech and hearing impaired and other intellectual disabilities. And then we, you know, spread the word through right. mobile phone, through messages, mm. so that others who have a similar dis disability can feel enthused by the fact that the the whole the whole you know um, effort of us is to change the attitude from I can't to I can, okay, right. and that doesn't happen immediately. There is no role model for them, you know. You don't have a Sanya Mizza whom we can talk about over there. So we have to create these role models ourselves, and then we have to disseminate it. So that right. is a, it's a much more labor laborious process. It's just that we love this work, so we've chosen this part. No, no, that's that's really commendable. And before I ask you the next question, for everybody joining in, uh, please feel free to send in your questions in the chat box or just press the raise hand button and we'll come to you so that you can ask your question. Uh, Ma'am, I'd love to know more about this initiative of yours that I found really impressive, which is the residential training centers. So, uh, uh, I think you ran a three month module for especially uh, women who wanted to be entrepreneurs and you worked with them and uh, made them uh, job ready. So uh, how is that initiative going on? Um, even when we began our work, we decided that at least 35% of our data should be young women with disabilities. Um, if you're a woman with disability, if you're from a village, if you're poor and you're a woman, then you have four burdens on your shoulders, okay? So, um, so the data will show you that even in disability on almost every score, a woman with disability actually scores the worst, yeah. whether it's education, whether it's employment, whether it's health, you name it, you know, she stands at the bottom. And therefore, we feel that we needed to at, at least have some kind of a focused approach on this. It's not really easy because in states like Rajasthan, you know, the women just don't come out, okay? But we do make an attempt to do this. Um, I think what happened is when it went online, the women asked us and the young girls asked us to start afternoon batches. What they wanted to do was to finish the household work fast right. and enroll in the afternoon, which we did, okay? And then the enrollments went up. And when they went up, that's when we really understood the desire of the women, you know, to, to have aspirational jobs or to work 
at local jobs or to have a or to be linked to a sustained enterprise right uh, we got mckinsey to do a pro bono you know kind of a, um oh the light has gone yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i'm in darkness but you can see mm-hmm. this it's there's a thunderstorm outside oh, okay oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully your connection will hold yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's okay otherwise shravan and vishnu will take over sure not to sure. worry <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. so when we did that study by mckinsey uh, we saw what the impact of our work is on women with disability so now we've created a separate program for that you know there's a reduction in sexual violence they begin participating in the discourses mm. both financial and non financial um unlike the men they willing to mentor <laughs> other women which i think is really important and of course we always know that if money goes into a woman's pocket whether it's a woman or a woman with disability the quality of the whole life of the family goes up because she invests in education absolutely of kids so um so 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 because of that now we have a sort of a small dedicated program where we focus on women with disabilities and you'll be happy to know that uh, we are going to soon start a dedicated program for women with disability entrepreneurs it'll be the first of its kind anywhere amazing amazing that that is so fantastic and all the best for that program uh, that you will soon launch and hmm. one one aspect i wanted to uh, talk about is a lot of people who work in the space of disabilities uh i think one of the challenges also is data right like uh representation yep. in say a census or a survey or That's the right. census which is coming up so what do you think about the situation and uh, are is youth for jobs taking up any initiatives in the data collection space as well yeah first is i think we always are very we are a very data driven organization so if you look at a mis um, it's a customized mis but the kind of um, data and reports we can pull from it is really amazing we've had companies really gasp saying that the, the you know and we use it for geography we use it to map youth we use it to um, get companies in that locality wow. and now what has happened is swarajability has happened by the way swarajability is swaraj the gandhi word for independence and ability because we leverage the abilities of disabled through tech training and jobs right. Right. so so yeah it was a beautiful we were i was just thinking you know i want a gandhi and name so i tried various combinations and one by one fine day the south indian coffee copy helped in the morning i got this lovely you know gandhian name and um, so it's beautiful because the kind of data we going to have with disability in the labor markets with the grassroots data also getting fed in and ngos and the governments and today we've signed not to be an mou the central government but we've signed with a lot of state governments who all want to tie up with swarajability so what will actually happen is that the minute i decide to set up a unit which analyzes this data i'll be able to offer the country a lot of data on the labor and wow. on the labor markets and disability wow wow that that would be truly useful i think not only for your organization yeah. so many others that's right for economists we don't absolutely <laughs> teach in development programs because economists says there's no data for them to you know yeah. work on yeah and even public policy so you know better yep. policy can be designed uh, absolutely yeah. absolutely absolutely uh, great uh, again anyone in the okay now it's my chance to i think we lost her uh, i'm back now sorry this was my uh, now it was my chance oh. to uh, be the victim of uh, <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> of the power yes, power yes. Uh-huh. power cut so <laughs> i'm back uh, but yeah so <laughs> i i also now at this point wanted to invite any questions from our audience and uh, yes anyone at all 
if you had any questions, you can just unmute yourself or ask that question to uh, Mira ma'am or the team who, from Youth for Jobs. Okay. Uh, yes, Ram Prasad, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, ma'am. Uh, uh, I am Ram Prasad and uh, I am actually a PhD student and uh, one of the first references uh, which I studied was yours, uh, your paper, mm -hmm. uh, 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 actually. So I really admire your work uh, and uh, also happy to be an investor uh, uh, oh. from the Rangde mm -hmm. platform. Uh, uh, yes, so uh, actually my uh, PhD research work is also on persons with disabilities and oh, livelihoods. Okay. So yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so one thing I wa just wanted to understand is that uh, uh, so, uh, so it is not only a kind of donation, but an investment and that too with a very high rate of return of 8%. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, which is more than the fixed deposit rates of interest nowadays. So, I, I really wanted to understand, uh, like, uh, I also happen to work in an NGO. And then uh, what we have uh, observed is that uh, it, the startup capital, uh, yeah, it, it, they, it, it may get repaid, but then the, we don't generally see the interest also being paid. Uh, along with the startup, uh, along with the principal amount. Uh, so I, I, how, how do you really ensure this or how do you achieve this? I, I, it was very uh, interesting for me. Uh, uh, yeah, how have you been able to achieve this? Uh, I think uh, Sukhada would give you more experiences, but for us, um, from our limited experience in this space, we have a team which handholds so the risk percentage would be far less for us because uh, we have a process in place. I'm not saying we'll be zero risk. I think if we scale, um, definitely we have to think of setting up a, a risk fund, okay? And I've thought about it, but as of now, because the numbers are really not large, uh, we don't have defaulters, but Sukhada, should be able to talk about risk and rural enterprise. Yeah. So I think uh, what Mira Ma'am said is what we follow that we not only work uh, with impact partner organizations, they are actually our safety net in a way because they have worked with these communities for multiple years. They know the people in this community. For example, if we're working with Youth for Jobs, Youth for Jobs knows who are the entrepreneurs uh, with disabilities who've been trying to make it on their own. Uh, what kind of a track record do they have? You know, uh, what are the uh, enterprises they are taking? They taking are. Up? So uh, we have a lot of uh, experience uh, working with impact partners who ensure that the right kind of profiles are onboarded. And of course, uh, one thing is uh, to be understood that as a platform, we do not guarantee repayments with interest because at the end of the day, every investor needs to be aware that you are investing in a person. You are investing in an actual human being. It's not a financial product. It's a very <laughs> human investment. And just like with human things, sometimes things go wrong. And, you know, sometimes maybe there's a death in the family. There is a sickness. Uh, but none of these are, you know, uh, willful defaults. So unless <laughs> there is something go really wrong, uh, we do follow up with our impact partners. And sometimes uh, the uh, repayments are delayed, but we make sure that they are never hounded for repayment. It's a very human process to make sure that everything is communicated transparently. Having said that, you can check out our repayment rates on the Rangde homepage. We do have uh, very high repayment rates and Rangde social investors also have experienced that. So yeah, just to answer that question and uh, I'll, I'll invite Subhash to uh, ask you the next question. Yeah, good evening. Uh, uh, just now, Shravan was telling about uh, PhD schemes. They are all government schemes. What kind of, because I never knew that, you know, government has got some special schemes for those, uh, you know, disabled people and all that. So if you can uh, tell on that. Yeah, I think for the entitlements and there are a large number of entitlements they have. Yeah. The first requis prerequisite is something called the UDID card which is the identity card for them. 
and that's a digital card. So, um, in fact, the first process is to help them to get the UDID card because many of them are not digitally savvy and the processes uh, are easy on one sense and transparent, but yet I think it's difficult for them. And in many villages, we find that people don't know about the UDID. Absolutely. Correct. Right. So uh, part of our advocacy, in fact, Vishnu will tell you that um, in the uh, grassroots program, which we do, everyone, the, the largest help they do is to help, you know, the person with disability, tell them about the UDID card and if they don't have. So, but again, you know, in all these processes, we can do a lot, but uh, there's a screening process, there's an assessment process at the PHC where the dis people with disabilities have to be assessed by approved doctors. There could be leakages there, the doctors may not be there. So those are the sort of teething problems which you can get stuck in at the village level. But otherwise, by and large, that's important. And once they access it, they, are, they can get a whole series of you know, entitlements, right prop, distribution of scooties and other things which the government has sitting in the collectorate, uh, two bus passes, train discounts, uh, public sector jobs, you know, there's a mind boggling um, pension, which goes up each time there's election. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's entitlement of land, sometimes the Tamil Nadu government gave computers to all, ah. but for all that you need your UDID card. Okay. So, um, but it is all across the states. In all the states, this is there actually. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, my second question was actually, of course, I think I can, I have read somewhere, uh, you have companies like Google and uh, I think Microsoft, they are working on a special gadgets for you know for different different type of disabled people and all that uh, have you i mean do you use that or have you come across or trying to explore uh, how they can really help you better i think google and all these companies they work on basically integrating accessibility into their phones into the instruments okay so that's where a lot of their research goes and yes for you know you'll find for people like visual impaired uh, speech and hearing impaired a lot of the solutions for them are embedded in the phone and they're able to you know, be, uh, lead a far more independent life than what it was before. But having said that, I don't think it's just you know, the Google yeah. and the others. I think what's happening in India is there are a lot of startups, right? Thanks to organizations like the Niti Ayog, which has the Atal innovation mission to uh, just the ecosphere. In fact, I've just come back from Delhi where there was a WHO meeting on assistive technology. And um, you can see the number of startups which are there. Uh, so I think that there are investors, there are youngsters, and many of them are people with disabilities, with good ideas, which are looking at gaps. But there again, I think um, IIT is huge. I mean, IIT Chennai has this huge research park and they do this thing, show called Empower. But I think the key thing is that many of them find it difficult to get the market. Though, the, you know, you say the market is growing because yeah. it's not just person with disability, but people are living longer. So everyone needs the same. And therefore you don't look at the market of disability alone, but you look at the general market. Mm. But... Um, but still, there's a struggle to get the market. So I think there's only one unicorn in the whole universe of assistive technologies of India. But the hope is that, you know, it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Raju, please go ahead with your question. Uh, hi, ma'am. Hi, Raju. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for this session. So if I, yeah, most of the, this entrepreneurship work that you, you Youth for Jobs is doing uh, looks to be in the rural areas where mostly either they are like illiterate or most likely they are like with basic literacy would be having. 
so as part of the training sessions are you incorporating any anything like uh, the, the basic financial literacy like basic things like account keeping or general entry so that uh, <clears throat> they will be more disciplined with this yes yes 100% that's a key part of it <laughs> okay yeah as why i brought this is as as i was part of some csr activities i work in pwc so there we had an association with uh, um, an institution called i create so they were majorly into this mm -hmm. and the speaker was saying multiple times that uh, this discipline of bookkeeping helped them a lot actually yeah that's true that's for the poor anywhere and of course even for persons with disability so we have a very nice module which shravan and vishnu actually you know train you have a good trainers to deliver the module it covers all the important aspects besides hand holding thank you ma'am thank you thank you for your question raju we have a question from rajendra how can we make sure the person with disability gets a exact percentage disability certificate so that the eligible person gets benefits yeah there's a system it's all laid down you know as i said yeah you have to get assessed by a pool of doctors who are certified by the government okay and understood. that gives you the certificate understood great uh, raju do you have another question i think i just saw you put that hands up thing again uh yes and anyone else at this point of time satish shweta sudha vicky swastika yes rajendra please uh, go ahead yeah good evening ma'am uh, my question is uh does the pension state government gives or the central government gives for the uh, disabled people because i see there is a difference in the pension from mm. andhra pradesh and in karnataka mm. karnataka people are getting only 1400 rupees pension which recently i impacted few beneficiaries of the pension and uh, also going back to my previous question people who doesn't have a limb in an accident they lost one of their leg he is also given 75% as uh, uh, like you no know, certificate and who has a rod in his leg has also given 75% like you no know, disability certificate so how do we justify this <laughs> well to your second question i have no answer okay many of the things which the government does <clears throat> could be also it takes a little time for them to change you know their legislation though at present we have a very tech savvy uh, government uh, even our secretary is amazingly tech savvy but still i think it takes time for them to work on these so i don't have an answer but uh, what was your question yes i think it's a state subject because uh, you'll find that uh, the state government if when it has less money it says i'm cleaning out the data so they'll reduce the numbers then when election happens they they're saying oh but that we have more representation so suddenly that expands so i think it's definitely the state government yeah <laughs> and, and i think that uh, yeah second question about you know uh, if one person has lost their limb versus if one person has a rod in their yeah. leg so uh, i don't know what is the logic <laughs> behind this but what has been your experience with the classification of disability it's very hard to answer these questions because you see uh, if you look at the act the act the good thing it's done is it's expanded the number right. of disabilities okay so far more who were excluded are now included okay right. um, and i think it's and even there a lot of people are not happy because they say this is left out for example i think acid victims is left out okay so those people are constantly saying a we are left out um, but i think each time you make certain advances for example this act for the first time it says that people with disabilities have a right to education and employment mm -hmm. and just when you say the right it me it makes the school education free for them right so i i think we should look at the positive the way at least i look at it i just look at the positive gains and anyway what we do is we try to collaborate with the government as much as we can 
otherwise you know we we do it ourselves wherever you need to do it yeah yeah great uh, thank you for that uh, ma'am and we will just see if there is any last question from anyone from the audience okay i don't see anyone unmuting themselves but what i would like to ask you as uh, <laughs> a last question from uh, rangdes side is you know any since we were talking about positives if you would like to share two or three positive trends that you're seeing from the ground that we could pin our hopes on i think i have far more faith in the potential of the poor to be credit worthy and um to do things which enhance their livelihoods okay right. uh, i think if you give them a solution which is pro poor uh, i think the number of safe and you give them the requisite training and skills the number of safeguards we require would possibly be less that has been my experience uh and what we do i think is that all of us have these spectacles where we look at the poor as not necessarily credit worthy i mean you look at the bank debts Right. you know i don't have to tell you who is not paying back okay so i think if we change our, our lenses and look at them in a different way okay i think that we'll all work together positively and that's my message <laughs> okay super and i think we have some last questions one from subhash uh, subhash if you could ask a question ma'am i just wanted to ask you that you know uh, i mean these uh, politicians do they really look at these people as a really vote bank and <laughs> because i really don't know what is the percentage in terms of i mean i don't know whether that's a fair question i'm not undermining any politicians but uh, do they really look at them as a you know uh, a vote bank sort of so that you know they do something for them and then you know it will swing something like that i i don't think i think if they look at the numbers of the census they won't look at them as a vote bank right, okay right. uh personally i think it disability it's not the vote bank but i think it's the uh, it's the story and it's mm. the you know it tugs at your heart strings yeah. so if for example the prime minister launches the sugam bharat i don't think he's doing it because yeah you know correct disability numbers are high this he can tell a powerful story so because the impact see i've done yeah. so much work in poverty but the more vulnerable you are higher is the impact so for example if sukda has found that when she works with rangde and other ngos the impact is high when you work with peace purple people persons with disabilities whether it's through youth for jobs or anyone else definitely the impact will be higher yeah 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 that's correct that's that's for sure that's for sure yeah and uh, we have a question from sudha if you could name some companies who've done csr projects with youth for jobs oh csr projects or uh, oh you mean uh, funders uh, yeah yeah. So, yeah she's just asked do any companies do csr projects with you huge i mean we are completely funded by csr we don't take government money okay amazing and with that i will wrap up this q and a session with uh, meera ma'am and thank you shravan thank you vishnu and thank you satyendra from the youth for jobs team for joining us and sharing your insights uh, thank you for all of you who joined in on a friday evening and i will leave you to your weekend plans i've put the link to the fund in the uh, chat box and if you're watching this on youtube you can find the link in the description box below this video i would strongly urge you to visit the fund page for the entrepreneurs with disabilities fund this is a one of a kind fund and i think this is the first for us at rangde to have a fund dedicated to entrepreneurs with disabilities and thanks to a fantastic team at youth for jobs we will aim to scale this as soon as possible thank you so much meera ma'am for joining us it's been wonderful 
uh, chatting with you. Thank Can you. Can so I much. have the last words? Yes, please. I want to tell everyone here who's present to make sure that we aim for getting at least 50 crores. Okay, no less. Yeah. Uh, absolutely why not spread the word spread Please the word, spread the word. Okay. and thank you so much again for thank joining you us. thanks a lot take care thank you Sudha, for the conduct